gives me right back up. And, you know, I'm just thankful that I got a God that loves me enough to correct me. And, yes. and now I'm willing enough to be teachable and, and take his correction and just and go on with it and run with it. You know, I, I preached last month, um, you know, about, to, you know, where our words matter. And, and, you know, when prophecy is given to you and things, and, you know, I like to try uh, start writing down uh, prophecies that are given to me and things so I can remember them because, you know, sometimes I'm very forgetful about things. And, and I found the book uh, uh, Thursday morning or Thursday sometime, and I started looking through it, and and, and I see the prophecies that had been given to us and, and things, and I said, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me because I've let down, and I've not run with the prophecies that were given to me. And I, I really I ask God for forgiveness, and, and I said, God, you told us uh, that we would never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, and you told me, uh, and then all the prophecies he's told us, uh, he's going to be right there with us the whole time. Uh, and he's never going to go nowhere. Uh, but it's up to us sometimes when we get prophecy. It's up to us uh, to be those willing servants uh, to fulfill those prophecies. Uh, and I don't know what happened yesterday, but when I asked for forgiveness, uh, something just burst inside yeah. me. Uh, and I'm ready to run. Uh, I'm ready to go on with Jesus because he's the one that's going to take care of me. You know, in other words, I was seen on the dirt somewhere, you know, in other states, you know, there's the school systems, the government's trying to take over, and they're trying to let the kids be what they want, if they're a girl and they want to be a boy. They're trying to let them trans, uh, trans or whatever, you know, let them be without telling the parents. They said it ain't the parents' business, but you know what? That's not the plan of God. The plan of God was a child is with the parent, and it's the parent's business. But I thank God that I know he's real. And I thank God that I know no matter what comes my way, I know he's going to take care of me. I'm excited to see what he's going to do in the end times. A lot of people may be scared. I'm telling you right now, I'm not scared because I know in the end who wins. And that's my God, my Jesus, my Savior, my healer. Why can't I feel you? 
And then somebody called me and wanted prayer. And when I started praying, the Lord fell on the floor as I was praying. And I said, Lord, I don't understand you. But then I realized it was for somebody else. It wasn't all about me. And I was like, oh, Lord, I need to feel you. But he's been there a whole time. He's with us. Praise you, Lord.
I'm just glad to be in church on Friday night. I don't the devil tonight, so they ain't nothing belongs to the devil. They all belong to the Come on, Sally, get ready to sign it. It's good to be in church. It's good to be a Christian. Yeah. They were first called Christians at Antioch because they were followers of that Christ. So that's who we are. We're followers of Jesus. That makes us Christians. We're supposed to be Christ-like. I don't know. The longer I pray, the more I serve God. The less I feel like I'm not. But I sure want to be. Amen. What an honor it is to know that your name is in the book of life. And that you didn't put it down there. No preacher did. No prophet. Apostle. So nobody can take it out. Jesus is the only one that can get it out. And he didn't put it in there to get it out. Amen. He knew the end from the beginning. So he knew who would be with him in the end. So he put their name in the book in the beginning. Because he knew they'd be there. So it don't matter what you're going through. If your name's in that book, he knew you'd make it. And he was going to make sure you make it. So he's moving for you to make sure that you make heaven your home. Um, and if God be for you, who can be against you? No matter who's against you, God's for you. No matter if they like your agent, God's for you. The whole world, the whole world gets against you, everybody. Seven billion people, about eight now. Eight billion people get against you. And you're on the other side and God's with you, you win. Amen. You'll always win. So give him another cheer. <laughs>
Jesus hear his name and Lord don't refuse me for surely there's a work that I do and even though it's humble Lord help my will to crumble and though the cost be great I'll work for you you're the lily of my valley you're my bright and morning star you're the best Light. Yeah. And because God is light, 
which is truth. God is truth. Truth is light. Truth reveals all darkness. So that's why people like to go to a church where they don't preach no truth. And that way they hide. But if you ever get around a place where they stick with the Bible and preach the truth, then you can't hide. The truth will uncover your sin. It will uncover your wrong. Then if you love the Lord like you say you do, you repent of it, get it right, work it out with God, and get a little closer to Him. But if you don't love Him enough, you'll back off. And then if they preach on it too much, that you just go find another church where they don't point that out. And, and, and you think you've done something great, but really all you've done is uh, die. That's all you've done. You die. You'll stay right there. Ten years from now, you'll be right there. Twenty years, you'll be right there. If God, if God, not what I say, but if God deals with you about something, you can't get around it, you can't go under it, you can't go over it, you've got to go through it. Right. And that's what you have to do. We all do. And it's not a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. I love it. I was praying for your church this afternoon and I telling the Lord, uh, I don't care how many times I do this. I have this, I'm a typical preacher who want to pray. But it don't matter how many's here or how many's not. What matters is that we fulfill the will of God for this night. Yes. All yes. 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 Nothing else matters in this world right now than what's going on in this building right now. Amen. It's all about it. Amen. This is the most important thing that's going on anywhere. What we're doing in here right now. Somebody else, they can say that nervously. But for us, it's in here Amen. right now. And the honest truth is, uh, uh, Jesus is here. You know that because you know the Bible. I was praying for you all, sitting in the car. And uh, I, I, anybody that knows me, I preach a lot. I, I always have because I want to. People do what they want to do. And I want to preach and travel, and that's what I do. And uh, about 300 times a year. And so I spend a lot of time in parking lots, just sitting in a parking lot somewhere beside a church. I have friends that call me. They'll say, where are you at? And then they bust out laughing. I said, well, that's so fun. And they said, well, you're either on your way to church, sitting beside a church, or going home from a church. And I said, how do you do it? He said, hey, that's all you ever do. And they act like I'm bored, but I'm not. I think it's a great lot. Yes. And so I love it. But, so I sit out, and what happens if I sit there long enough, I start hearing voices. Uh, it's, it's usually the voices of the devil that's fighting the minds of people. And I'm hearing. Okay? I just sit there and calm my spirit. I can hear where the battle's at. And so I sit out here and listen and listen. I couldn't find a battle. You know what I heard? I heard hunger and thirst. I heard a hunger and a thirst all around this little bill that something has happened here and you all are hungry and thirsty for truth yes. and for righteousness yes. and for the things of God. Yes. Yes. And because of that hunger and thirst, God's going to feed you. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Yes. So he's going to fill you. There's no doubt about it. Righteousness is a strange thing to me. I read about it today, studying on it a little bit because uh, to a Hebrew, to a Jew, uh, righteousness had a, a little different meaning than from us. What it meant was is to stay in the way. Uh, and to them it meant to stay in the way of the law. And when you walked in the law, you were righteous. But we know the law can't make us righteous. Uh, our righteousness comes from before the law. Abraham it comes through Abraham. And that's before the law. We were, uh, Abraham was uh, esteemed righteous because of his faith in God. So yeah. we're, we're made righteous by our faith in God. Mm -hmm. And so a Jew, the word they used for righteousness, uh, it, it meant to stay in the way. And their mindset was that because they uh, were shepherds and they traveled from one field to the next, from one area to the next, to feed their sheep, and they followed wells they, they, because they had to have water. The thing they had to have was food and water. So they'd go from well to well to well and, and grassy area to grassy area to grassy area. 
So every year, it was about the same path because that's where the wells were at. And so to a Jew, that was like righteousness. They stayed on that path, and if you got off of it, there wasn't no food and there wasn't no water. And so Jesus come along and said, said that. Uh, if you can hunger and thirst after righteousness, in other words, if you're off the path, get back on it. And our path is to follow Jesus. He said, I'm the way. I am the way. There is no other way than through Jesus. Absolutely not. You can't get around it. You can't go over him, under him. You cannot. You can't even. You, there's no way you can do anything without Jesus. You cut Jesus out of your life, you have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Uh, a lot of people talk about it, but they don't really know him. If you know him, what you know is who he is. Yes. And according to the Bible, he's grace and mercy. Yes. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, the law came by Moses. Yes. Moses is a lawgiver. And we know, I know you know, that's why uh, uh, Moses couldn't enter into the promised land. Because he was the author. Uh, God used him through the law. And the law can't get us into the promise. And, and Moses couldn't go. So he had to decrease or die. And then Joshua took him in. And 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 so we, you can't get there. You can live, you can honor all the holy days you want, holidays, quit eating pork, and eat muskrat if you want. I don't care. Whatever you want to eat. But you're gonna you can't do nothing, nothing to get around the mercy of God. Amen. Nothing. None of it will help you without the mercy of God. Amen. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yes. So if you want, if you find Jesus, you find the truth. Yes. And then you find grace yes. to walk in that truth. Yes. Yes. Grace. Undeserved favor. That's who we are tonight. Yes. We have undeserved favor. Yes. Okay, if you can deserve it. If I fight a battle, I don't know if you all do, but I fight a battle want to earn it. Lord, I haven't prayed enough. I haven't read enough. I haven't sought you enough. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't fast long enough. I've been on six forty-day fast and one seventy-day fast. And at the end, of every one of them, I hear a voice say, "You didn't fast long enough." Oh my God, I'm gonna kill my crazy self. You don't go so far without food. And so, and, or I pray. I have prayed. Not every time I pray, I pray for a couple of hours, and the minute I get up, I hear a voice, "You didn't pray long." Enough. And so the devil's always wanting to tell you, you're not doing enough. The truth is, you ain't doing nothing about it. Jesus paid it off. Amen. He paid the price. Amen. And anyway, we, all, our job is to believe in what he did. So I, how many believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? If you, can, how it, if, you, if you can believe it, it's yours. If you can believe it, all things are possible to them that believe. And so... Uh, uh, God's way is to reveal himself. And, and, uh, and I told you last night, he's a, he loves his children. It's amazing to me uh, how much he loves his children. Uh, the Bible said God is love. And the Bible said not only are we to love our enemies, but, but he said the greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. Jesus said this. 613 laws. And he said all the laws. Every one of them, all the commandments, are built on one scripture, one thing. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. Now, is that not amazing? Yeah. That Jesus wrapped it all up into one little scripture, every bit of it. Amen. Thou yes. shalt love the Lord. Well, what's it mean to love God? Well, uh, it means to obey Him. Uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. It, uh, I'm giving sacrifice. I, uh, I was praying today, and, and Sally and I come up rough. I mean, rough. You just don't know how rough it is. We got saved. It was rough. Lord, we was living on the streets, so anything we had was one we had. And uh, most we were doing drugs and our life and stuff. But uh, uh, we were living in an old farmhouse down in southern Indiana. And I mean, it was falling down around it. It's just, and somebody rented to us for 50 a month, and we struggled to pay the rent. And it's just a hard time in our life. Nothing was going right, but I was preaching night after night <clears throat> and having a move of God. But there wasn't no money. And uh, in my house, you, have, you are not allowed to speak 
for the first five, four hours every morning. Nobody was allowed to talk. Uh, Becky lived with us, my sister, and Sally, and me, and uh, you had to sit in quiet and read your Bible and pray for the first four hours every morning. Then uh, Sally and Becky would go upstairs to pray, and if they come down the steps and I didn't see the glory of God around them, I'd yell at them. And I said, listen, you all just went up there and wasted your time. You didn't even get prayed through. Go back. So they'd go back upstairs, but if they come down the next time, they're missing steps when they come down and say, oh, then they get prayed through. And that's what we did for years, for years. That's the way we, we were broke. We had no money. I was telling but we, we ate zucchini sandwiches and, and, and Lord, and, and, and I come off a fast and boil a bunch of turnips. I like turnips. And, uh, and Sally ate turnips with me, boiled turnips. And, man, we just, and, a few days later, after that fast wore off, she took a bite of a turtle and back guy. And she thought that's the worst thing she ever put in her mouth. I said, well, you didn't, you liked it a couple days ago. She said, I haven't eaten a week. Anything tastes good after a week. And so we, we come up that way. But not one bit of, not one sacrifice I've made. Not one, Brother Hall come to me one day when I was broke. And I, I think he was trying to encourage me. And he said, and he did. And he said, son, you'll struggle for a certain number of years, and then God will uh, turn it around, and it'll never be that way again. Well, it's almost 10 years. That's sad. We struggled almost 10 years. Nothing we did work. Nothing went right. But buddy, one day he turned it. And when he turned it, that struggle was over. It's a different battle now. So I don't care what you're going through. God will let it go on for a season. It may be years. Maybe two or three years. Maybe five years. But at, when he gets done with that season in your life, it's going to change. And it's going to change for the better. And there's nothing the devil can do about it, nor nobody else. Right. The thing about God is, yeah, the Bible said he makes a way when there seems to be no way. Yeah. And we make plans in our life, but God's got other plans for us. Right. What I found out for me is to be very pliable. That I may set my affection to do certain things, and then all of a sudden, the thing turns left on me. And, 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 and God ain't going to lead me that way at all. I've got to go over it this way. And if I'll follow it, I do all right. But if I buck against the will of God, I get in trouble. Yeah. I mean, oh, God don't want you to resist his will. Come on, and everything's not his will. I had a guy give me a tent the other day. A, a big old 60 by 120 tent. And it's canvas. It's 30 years old. Well, the thing... Uh, it's heavy. I know I've put up tents for years. And, and this one is overly heavy. It's 16 ounce canvas. It's got cables in it. It's got uh, uh, the Lord, the equipment they put it up with, the poles and stuff. I put up 80 wide tents and they, they didn't have poles that day. I never seen nothing like it. Big old, everything's heavy. And I told Sally, I said, I'm 73 years old. I can't even probably pack one of the poles. I said, my goodness. Uh, and so now I've got an albatross. The thing's taking up space. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to find somebody who wants it and give it to them. I think that's what I'm going to do. And, and you know, So everything that uh, people do with you, everything people give you, everything that goes on, and always to bless you. And it's not always God. Uh, uh, God has other plans. And I mean, if you'll follow God's plan, you'll win. You don't want to follow God's plan. What is it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What did, what did Samuel say was the greatest thing? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, all God wants out of any one of us is just to obey what? Well, the, the people that, uh, 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 some people will tell you, certain ideas of the law. The pick and choose. Most people are into pick and choose. They got pick and choose religion. They pick two or three things out of God's law. You got to live them. And if you don't, you're going to hell. Come on. But they ain't living the rest of the law. Come so on. if you pick and choose the law and we'll try to live and put it on somebody else, you're guilty of the whole law. Amen. 613. And you can't live the whole law. Nobody ever has. So you lose. So there is no pick and choose. Come on. Amen. Amen. We live by grace and mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's the way we live. There's absolutely nothing in the natural. 
that can make you spiritual. That's That's right. Right. That's right. Not one thing. We love music. We play a lot of music in our church. You all been there. We love to sing just like you all do. And and my girls do a very good job of it. And Sally. And, and we love it. But you understand not one thing of the natural can get us what we're looking for or into his presence. The only thing that can get us in is the truth is, the honest truth, that what you're looking for is right there. It's right there. It's just a little bit away from where you're at right now. And all you've got to do is press in. He said press towards the mark of the high calling of God. How many want to press in? Hallelujah. And you don't have to. You can, uh, I know some people think you press in or running and shouting and dancing. You can do that. If that gets you in, then that works. But you can also press in without doing that. Now you can literally just press in and just keep pressing until you're in the presence of God farther than you've ever been in your life. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm looking to get there. Yes. I am not satisfied where I'm at. Brother Hunter, and I'm looking to get there. It don't matter what I got to turn loose of or let go of or change in my life. I want to draw out of him. Yes. Because yes. if I do, he yes. will draw out of me. Yes. I may want to draw out to him tonight. You draw out of him. You know, there's two kinds of knowledge. There's two kinds of knowledge. There is natural knowledge, which is you get that through touch, taste, sight, hearing and smell. Yeah. And that's the way all natural knowledge comes that way. You read a book, you look, or you listen to a tape, or you listen to a lecture, or you listen to somebody give you instruction, uh, or you taste the food, or you, you know, or you smell up something. Uh, uh, you know, most of us, if we smell food, we don't smell the uh, way we like it. We don't eat it. But I eat things that didn't smell that good. It was very good. And, uh, I've eaten them burger cheese, but I can't say it's very good. It just stunk, that's all. But touch, taste, sight, hearing, and smell. Your senses. So that is sense knowledge. All the knowledge. Well, you can't know God that way. You can't know God just by touch. You can't know just because you have some bumps don't mean you know who God is. Well, I get bumps when they cut my hair sometimes. Yeah. And that guy ain't God. He just got a razor around my ear. That's all. Makes me nervous. He's so you can't know him just by sight because no man's seen God at any time. Right? You can't really know him by hearing, not natural hearing, like what I'm talking about, because very few have ever heard the audible voice of God. I'm sure there are some, but very few. And so we can't know him that way. But you know him by revelation now. That, that's a knowledge where he he uncovers himself and reveals himself and he has purpose for it. Uh -huh. And his purpose is, is because we want to get close to him. That's what we tell him. And he answers our prayer. And we want to know him. That's the way I pray. I hope that's the way you pray. I want to know you. I want to get close to you. So because of that, he shows us things, that light, that are keeping us apart. And, you know, when you start as little old stuff as you did, smoking, drinking, cussing, lying, <coughs> cheating, stealing, uh, which, you know, it's stuff that you can lay down without a whole lot of trouble because even the ungodly know that stuff is wrong. But as long as you're serving, the, digger, the deeper he digs. He digs deep. Come on. Amen. You know, he digs deep. Uh, uh, God put gold in the earth. And he put it in there for you. Mm -hmm. It ain't there just to be make up the ground. I don't care what they say. He put gold in the earth. He put silver in the earth. He put every bit of it in the earth. And there's a place for gold where you find it. But you got to find the place. Yeah. And so God makes you work for it. You have to really work for it. Very few people have ever struck a bridge with gold. And, and the, during the gold rush, people died trying to find gold. And they lost everything they had. And so God has put it here for you. But he made it where you had to work to get it. So God's got some gold. He's got some, really got some gold. Come but on. you got to dig for it. And you got to work for it. It don't come easy. And a man that is a coal, uh, a coal miner too, but a man that is a gold miner or a man that's looking for silver, silver runs in a vein, according to the Bible. There is a vein for silver 
where you find them. And there's a place for gold. And so uh, a man that uh, digs for gold has to give up things in his life. He can't, he can't have much other life. Uh, uh, if you ever uh, watch them guys in Alaska that are trying to find gold in the Bering Strait, they use the big equipment and suck all kinds of dirt up off the bottom of the Bering Strait. And then they, when they get, I mean tons and tons and tons of mud and dirt, and when they get done, they got a little pile of gold about like that, about that tall. It don't look like that much, but at the end of the year, it's a million or two million dollars. And, 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 but that, they spend all their time out there doing it. They can't land at home, they're gone with family. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. And so anything of great value has got sacrifice. Amen. A lot of sacrifice. And so that's, uh, if God, if God is pulling on you, and I love it when he's pulling on me, but when he, if he's pulling on you to get closer to him, then he's going to show you things that keep you and him apart, Amen. whatever they are. Amen. It may be jealousy. It may be un, it, 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 hallelujah. It, it may be jealousy, and it may be unforgiveness. Uh, that's what keeps us apart. We're yes. worried to death. Uh, most people are worried to death about the length of some woman's dress, but it ain't what's keeping us apart. Amen. That old hatefulness in our heart. Yes. <laughs> hurting us is not forgiving our enemies, yeah. loving our enemies, on, right. and not forgiving people, or have jealousy in your heart, yeah. or, or be a, a hateful or mean. I know some people that believe just like I believe, but they're hateful and mean. I can't hardly stand to be around them or some mean. And, and they believe what I believe, and when they preach it to me, I feel like I've been beat up. Yeah. I feel like I've been in a fight all night. I don't want to leave church and feel like I've been in a fight. Yeah. I want to leave church and feel like I've been in the glory of God. Yeah. And you know what that means? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I might be out of the Lord. If you really, I might be shot out of my mouth. If you really lift up Jesus, that's the way you'll leave. So that tells me what they're doing. Ain't lifting him up, but I feel beat up. But if they lift him up, I feel delivered and set free. I don't want to be delivered and set free. I thought I was trying to I felt deliverance go through here when Sister Janie was saying. I felt deliverance go through here when Sally was saying. And so you understand? All we got to do is lift up Jesus and get anointed. Yes. And get anointed, we have to press into it and say, yes, Lord. Yes. And if we do, the chain's going to break. The glory of God's going to manifest, and we're going to be healed. Yes. Lift your hand to heaven and thank God the Lord. Hallelujah. God's got, God's got all this. This is all for us. Everything God did is for you. Everything. Yes. Every, everything is Sally. Hung up right now and something I preached on three or four years ago and, and, and nobody got excited with me so I quit. But uh, God, God's got endless words. She was looking at, at uh, the Milky Way the other night on a little uh, clip on, on her phone and they was telling how many stars was in it. Lord, it was a trillion stars. Some ridiculous number. Just in the Milky Way. Well, that ain't all the stars. And every one of them stars are planted. And that's only the ones we can see. The ones that shine the brightest, them's the ones we see. We can't we don't have any that we can't see. But, but we know. Worlds without end. They can't count them. They can't even count the solar system. They can't count the solar system. We live in a solar system with billions and billions and trillions of stars and planets. That's where we live. And I, and I said this, and I believe it. I believe the earth is the center of it all. It doesn't mean it revolves around us. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is God put man on this earth. Yeah. That made this earth the most valuable thing in all of his creation. Hallelujah. Lord. And glory to God. Oh, if you could hear me. Do you understand? God gave you his best. When he gave us this earth, he gave us his best. Yeah. This ain't second best. Don't complain about it. He gave it. We got the best earth there is. Hallelujah. I mean, he, we got it. And, and it's made just the way he wants it. He's fixed it exactly the way he wants it. And if we'll walk with him and serve him, it'll take care of us. I ain't worried about saving trees and 
saving whales or kill a whale. I like a good slice of blow. Be all right with me. I'll try. Hallelujah. The Eskimos can eat and I can eat. Amen. Amen. I made my brother-in-law mad. I told my sister, well, my sister, I was going to get me a license plate that said, let's cut down an old growth tree and eat a whale, roast a whale. And he got some mad man, he's a tree hunter. And he got some mad man, couldn't stand it. My sister laughed, she thought that was the funniest thing. And he said, well, I don't think that's funny. He said, well, I think it's funny. Said, What's funny is, is you think an owl's is stupid and hang on a tree and die. Well, that's, that's a stupid man. And, you know, that's what Al Gore did to it. He told, he told us some spot them owls up in Oregon when they were cutting down the old growth trees and the poor little owls was dying because they hung on the old growth trees. I thought, Lord, the owls are smarter than him. They just jumped a new tree and broke it right on the wall. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah. Are yeah. uh, uh, we idiots? I mean, we ain't. I'll tell you, we're being run by a bunch of idiots. Yeah. 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 And so you understand we that, that, that it's not that way. You're not that in fact you don't have to worry about that stuff. Somebody said they're gonna cut down all the trees in the South America, we ain't gonna be able to breathe. You can forget it. They ain't gonna cut them down so fast you can't breathe. Don't worry about that. Worry about that lake of fire. That's what we're looking at. is get your mind off of what's important yeah. and get on a bunch of junk that has no power in it. That's why some of this preaching has no power. It's a bunch of junk with no power in it. It won't deliver nobody. It won't help nobody. Matter of fact, it brings people into bondage and they feel all beat down and pulled up and upset and don't know what they want to do. But Jesus didn't come to bring us into bondage. He come and set us free. And who's the son that is free? He is free in the hand. She said, you listen to me. Said, you always thought you were right. Always. 
and said, I'm telling you, I don't want you in this house no more. You just get out of here. And I said, well, Mom, I'll leave. I don't have a problem with that. But I will tell you this. I may not always be right, but I'm right about this sweet Holy Ghost. That I'm right about. You better remember. And I left. Well, you know where I went? I went to the church and cried for four hours. That's Sally. She was with me. They sat in the car. And I went in the church and wept and cried for about four hours. I was tore all to pieces. It broke my heart. My mom had run me off. I loved my mom. And she was a good woman. She just didn't understand. Well, about, what, a couple months after that, mom wrote me a letter. She never did send it. But so she called me and said, Mike, I want them tongues. And I said, all right, mom. The Lord knows what you want. Uh, go find you a meeting somewhere where they believe in the Holy Ghost talking in tongues and get them to pray for you. And uh, she went to a prayer meeting. And as far as I know, she fell out the floor and got the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. Well, then, mom, then seven years after that, Mom told me, she said, I learned more in the last seven years with the Holy Ghost than I learned in the first 30 with that. And so sometimes, Lord God, to them 
He sent us to them. Some of us are prophets. Some of us are apostles. Some evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He sent us out across the world to preach to them and try to get them in, get them saved, get them sanctified, get them filled with the Holy Ghost. But they're not all listening to us. And very few of them listen to us right now. I believe it's going to change uh, very shortly. But they, they don't all listen to us. So they've rejected the voice of God through us. They've rejected it. So that means judgment's got to come to get their attention. And, and they're like children. Uh, uh, just like little children, you know. You tell your child, don't touch that stove. Don't touch that wood stove. It'll burn you. Don't touch it. What do they do? They touch it anyhow. They, they, but that pain, they don't forget. They won't touch it no more. They ain't got to do what you told them. They don't want that pain. So God, there's going to be pain come on more. Uh, it's going to... God's going to judge this world. So when the spirit of judgment hits, it's going to uh, judge the world and try to force them to repent. But the world is going to turn on us. You're going to be hated of all men for his name's sake. They're going to, they're, you're not going to be able to buy ourselves. They're not going to, they're going to, somehow they're going to take our money. Uh, uh, they're going to, and, and they're not going to accept money. They're probably going to, eventually they're going to use a mark. I've seen online the other day where they're using them now in some Walmart. They got a, a thing they put in people's hand. You just stick your hand over a, a reader and, and, yeah. and it takes money out of your account and get what you want. So we're closer to it than people like to think. Amen. They say, well, what are we going to do? Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's right. You're going to make God rapture you out of here? What are you going to do? So, well, I believe. I don't care what you believe. What are you going to do? Make him do it. You can't make him do it. All you can do is get ready and go through whatever he wants. Yeah. That's yeah. all we can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if he wants us to go through it, we'll go through it by the help and the grace of God. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And he will not fail us. He won't turn us loose. And he won't let nothing happen that he don't want to happen. Yeah. So you're in good hands. How I many know you're in good hands? Yeah. So what's going to happen is they're going to make it hard on us. They're going to take our money. They're going to, they're, they want to stop. Uh, they just, you know, they, they claim, I don't know that this is totally true. Uh, so, you know, it ain't in the Bible, so I don't know. But they claim that the fires in Maui, part of the reason was they had one of them 15-minute cities set up over there. You know what a 15-minute city is? They're setting up cities in different parts of the world right now. They, they just, uh, people just destroyed one. And uh, was it England? In England, and that means uh, they use electric cars, and in 15 minutes you can be anywhere in the city and pull people in in 15 minutes. Uh, you can go to work in 15 minutes, you can go to the grocery store within 15 minutes, everything you need parks within 15 minutes. So, why? Well, it's bondage. They want to bring people into a little group where they can control everything they do. That's their goal because that's what the devil wants to do. So, well, they're not going to do it to me. Listen to me. You're not going to. The only way you're going to be able to stop this or resist this is by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's the only way. Right. So, no, I've got guns. Guns ain't going to do it. They got. You heard Joe Biden. He's got F-16. <laughs> uh, they got. They've got infrared. Some of you all know it. They've got telescopes right now that can see through walls and Amen. see everybody in the building and know who's here. They've got them right now. This is not four out stuff. And so you understand the world's being set up for this uh, one world government and, and, and to bring everybody in bondage. And God is allowing it and I may be instigating it. I don't know. You'll have to talk to him about it. But he is allowing it because it's going to bring judgment on the world and then it's going to force the church. Uh -huh. That we have prayed and sought God, and too many people have played with God. They go to church if they want, they read their Bible if they want. Uh, if they want to go somewhere else, and the, if they have a revival or church, and they want to go to, uh, to the ocean, they just leave and go and don't mean nothing to them. They, they, and because we uh, played with God and not gave Him our best all yes. the time, then what this is going to do is force us to trust Him. I mean, know the great, maybe the greatest five word in the Bible is the word trust. Just trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. 
So it's going to force you to trust God. But in the wilderness, there wasn't no convenient food store or, or, or anything for them to get food from. God bring man out of heaven, water out of the rock, their yes. shoes grow on their feet, their clothes don't get off. So I don't know that that's going to happen. But what we do know is going to happen, they're going to take everything we've trusted in. Uh -huh. Everything. How many trust your government? I don't trust them. They destroyed that in the last two or three years. Amen. I mean, it's, just, it's awful. It's awful what they've done. And, yes. and so you understand, everything that we've trusted in and leaned on is being taken right now. And it's got, the rest of it's going to be taken. Now, which means we've trusted in our money. But, so God's going to remove that. But we've trusted in other things. And so they're going to stop every bit of it and push you and I to a place that we can only trust God. So well, what will we do? Well, it's my opinion that when there's nothing, that we have no help in this world, no help but the help of God, He's going to move in the miraculous. Yes. And I mean in the miraculous. Lord, lift your hand to heaven. Glory to God. I don't know what that does to you. Hallelujah. They pull me out of the mind off. They almost shut us down in COVID. Churches locked down. People got scared to death. Started sticking shots in their arm of drugs. They don't even know what was in them. Just it because they was a nervous wreck. Which proved none of us was close enough to God. We need to get a little closer. Amen. And so the next thing they do is going to shake us a little bit harder. And eventually it's going to be just what I'm talking about. It's going to push us to the place that you're either going to trust God or you're going to go along with the world. In other words, take the mark. And so I ain't taking the mark. I'm going to make up my mind. How many's got to make up my mind? I'd rather die. I'd rather they cut my head off, starve me to death, beat me to death, or, or, or do whatever they want to do than take that, and I'm not taking it. Everybody say amen. I'm not taking it. You understand? And so this spirit of judgment is going to push you away from the world because they're, or you're going to be hated and push you closer to the presence of God. So then God's going to begin to do what he did in Egypt. When he sent Moses back into Egypt, what did he do? He didn't play around that much. Lord, they was the greatest nation in the world. They was conquered nations all around. The same when God sent Israel back into Egypt, he 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 turned he turned the, the, the sky black as sackcloth of hair, and the only light be on that bunch of Jews. <laughs> the cows are going to get sick, and the Jew cow was standing beside a Hebrew cow, and the, or the Hebrew cow about beside an Egyptian cow, and the Egyptian cow gets sick, and the Hebrew cow did. Or, or next thing you know, the sands turn into lice, and the rivers turn into blood. They worship the Nile River. I mean, he wasn't playing around. This is a, and then they leave and get out on a peninsula and that bunch of Egyptians say, we'll kill them like we've done to everybody else, wiped everybody out. That bunch of Jews can't even fight for themselves. They're not fighters or they're, they're farmers or they're a, a shepherd and bricklayers because that's what we made out of. And they can't fight back. So you know what God did? He put a flame of fire between the Jew camp, the Hebrew camp, and the Egyptian camp. Come on. And then while they's over there prancing their horses around, trying to figure out how to get around the fire, he knocked the wheels off the chariot. They didn't have any wheels. He's some angel down there taking the bones off. And them things just are falling everywhere. And they, there they are, go wheels on their chariot, about a ball of fire in front of them. They don't know what they're going to do. The whole time, the Jews are going across long dry ground, get to the other side and grab a tent of light, and just have their shelter. Hold it wrong time. Oh, Egyptians thought, well, since they can do it, we can do it. That's what the world thinks. Since we, since these homeless folk and people trying to live right, since God's going to move for him, they're gonna, they ain't going to move for us. It ain't going to be the same. No, no, no. And so what happened was they got, got down in the water, the water come in on them, and wiped the whole army out just in a few minutes' time. The whole army. That's what God did for a bunch of people that did not know his name. They were not washed in his blood. They was not filled with his spirit. And they really didn't have any faith. They had no faith. They <coughs> perished in the wilderness because of their unbelief. And so here you sit tonight with faith in God, washed in the blood, filled with his spirit, know the name of the Lord, and you think God ain't going to move for you? 
My Lord, look out there. Here we come.
right now. That's the greatest thing there is. You may not see it, feel it, hear it. You may not understand it at all. But whatever he's doing in you right now is the greatest thing there is. He has plans for you. His thoughts towards you are not for evil, but for good. And his plan for you is not for evil, but for good. So whatever he's doing in your life. So right now, the greatest thing for me is to be in this church in West Virginia tonight. Nothing any great would matter. I, I know people that claim they preach the big crowd, but I don't have to believe them. I mean, thousands, and I don't believe them. I, I'd have to see it myself. But I'm from Missouri, show me. I'm not really. But you understand? The greatest thing he's doing is what he's doing in your life right now. Nothing any greater than that. So instead of always, do you not notice that we're in a society and a time that nobody's satisfied with what they are, who they are, or where they are? Yeah. Men want to be women, and women want to be men. Mm -hmm. But I want to be what I am, a Christian. Yeah. And I want to be what I am, a virgin. Yes. And I want, I want to be satisfied with what God's doing in my life right now. Amen. And when I'm happy with that, he's got something else. Yeah, it's like the end of it. He's working right now. He's working on the inside. But there's times. We have times. I'm sure you all do. I go through months. Nobody will get saved. Then you'll go to meetings and somebody gets saved every night. Everywhere you go. Or you'll go for months and nobody will get healed. And then you'll go through a time. Everywhere you go, somebody will get healed. And then you'll go through months. Nobody gets the Holy Ghost. Then you'll, you'll go through a time. Every, how do you pray for them? We'll get the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. And so all these are times and seasons. And we need, uh, my daughter doesn't like women. Amy, she don't like to be cold. And she don't like women. I said, well, there goes 25% of your life. <laughs> she said, well, I like fall. And I like spring. And I said, I like summer, but I don't like to be too hot. I said, well, you just set yourself up to be miserable 25% of your life. I like that. I love the snow. Uh, I was raised on in the country, like most of you. And, uh, I love the sound of the chainsaw in the winter time with about six inches of snow on the ground and a snowfall. I like it. And I like to be out in the woods by myself and it's so quiet and it's peaceful and everything's white. I like it. And so I like white. I don't, I don't like, like it to last too long. <laughs> I like a little wetter. And, and so if you, you're setting yourself up to be sad, I don't like for what God's doing in my life now. Then you're going to be miserable because he's going to do it anyway. Yeah. Just make up your mind. Whatever he's done is the best for me. Amen. He's doing his best. I don't care what he's doing in your life. It is for your good, and it's his, your best. Yes. It's the best for you. And when it's over, you'll look back and thank God. Give Jesus a cheer. Yes.